It's breaking out at this point. Over 275 is a breakout. Obviously, over silver is a breakout. And those aren't new highs until we get to $50. But there's not, there's really nothing on the chart uh, between $30 and $50. So once we get over $30, uh, I think $30 is going to become the floor. And you probably, I'm guessing within three to six months time, you'll see $50 in silver. You're locking in a profit as soon as you buy the metal. You buy the metal, you sell the metal at the same time, then you deliver it and you book the profit. The, the leverage is crazy. So that, that's why we open the mint. Because for us to take our production off the market and you, you do that math, for us to take 10 million ounces off the market just for easy math, that's the equivalent of taking 3 billion ounces in out of the paper market. Yeah. Why a $30 resistance makes a lot of sense for silver. And once it breaks through, we will head towards $50 and more. Silver is breaking out and everyone is talking about the future of the precious metals. So in today's episode, we bring you three financial experts that will explain the current situation and will share their price targets for gold and silver. We watched hours of footage to make sense of this so you don't have to. We'll show you the best clips of the latest interviews of Bill Holter, Keith Newmeyer, and Rafi Farber explaining the recent gold and silver price breakout and giving his his thoughts on in the current fundamentals behind the move hit the like button smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications let's get back into the episode if you're sony or or you know tesla or bmw it doesn't really matter who and uh, and then you need to have you know 20 million ounces of silver for your product that you're producing and in, in 2024 you know you're going to approach um you know the big big traders which is pretty well JP Morgan or yeah. HSBC or, you know, whoever they are. Yep. And um, um, you're going to sign a contract for delivery of those ounces. And you're going to tell that bank to deliver those ounces to whatever port that they need to be delivered to. So as a miner, you know, we sell our ounces through a trader to the banks. The banks know how many ounces they're going to be getting because, you know, they know the market quite well. Of course, they leverage those in the paper market. Um, because they're shorting against that purchase. So Sony buys 20 million ounces, they leverage that up, you know, three, 400 times uh, uh, in, in the paper market. And, and it's in their best interest to not allow that that uh, spot price to change that dramatically. Because all of a sudden, and that whole run in 2011 from $40 or, you know, call it, you know, 35, depends on who you listen to, but 40 to $50, that was all short covering. And uh, yeah. the banks were in super stress during that period of time. There's talk about, you know, that's why, you know, Bear Stearns, I think it was, or, or whomever ultimately went uh, uh, went bankrupt because of their big paper uh, derivative position on silver. Whether that's true or not, who knows? But, you know, there's lots of information on the internet that you can find, you know, that discusses that topic. Um, you know, there's a big short position in the market and mm -hmm. it's all held by the banks and, it's all because silver is a very commercial market, uh, and it's very thin. And this, you know, these guys and you know, these are young thirty-year-old MBAs out of college that have no clue about you know the supply and demand fundamentals of the metal. Yet they've been shorting silver for the last thirty years, but you know they don't know that the above-ground supplies of silver back in the eighties was five billion ounces, and back then. Uh, there was no electronic uses. The electronic uses just started coming in. Today, the, the above ground supplies are about a billion ounces, and it's all in ETFs. So all that above ground supply has been eaten away in electronics. And it's it's uh, and no one's um, recycling cell phones or computers. All that all that computer waste is just thrown into dumps. Ninety percent of all silver that's been mined is gone. Uh, it's it's in waste dumps. It's in the ocean. You know, it's it's gone. You know, ninety percent of all gold that's been mined is still sitting on the surface mm -hmm. in vaults, you know, in hoards, and so on and so forth. So, you know, silver is very much a depleting asset because you know, in this cell phone, like you know, my little Apple here, there's about two or three dollars of silver in this thing, mm -hmm. and to take it out, it would cost a fortune because Apple is very good at yeah. embedding yeah. That silver into that circuit board. And there's not too many technologies out there that can extract it in an economical way. So no one, no one, you know, recycles computer waste. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's where a lot of our silver goes. And so it just, you know, gets, you know, put in waste dumps, unfortunately. And, uh, Bill Holter has made a bold prediction that silver could soon see a massive price increase. Currently, silver is priced below $30 per ounce, but Bill believes that once it crosses this $30 mark, it could rapidly climb to $50. According to him, there's nothing in the current market trends or charts that would prevent this jump once it breaks past 30 years. This level could become the new floor price for silver. Why is this important? Well, for investors, this presents a potentially lucrative opportunity. Silver has already outperformed gold this year, increasing in value by over 25%, yet it remains relatively cheap compared to gold, making it an attractive investment for those looking to diversify their portfolio or hedge against economic uncertainty. Bill's predictions are not just about numbers. They reflect a broader economic sentiment and the role of precious metals in financial security. With growing market instability and diminishing control by central banks, silver and gold are increasingly viewed as safe havens. Bill Holter's insights suggest that now might be a smart time to consider investing in silver before its price potentially skyrockets. Now we'll show you more clips, but first smash the subscribe button and share this video with a gold stacker. Uh, and they really went into gear the end of February, early March. Um, that in gold, uh, the big buyer has been China. Uh, you're also seeing pretty good buying out of Europe. Uh, in silver, the huge buying is coming out of India. And bo uh, both metals got pretty overbought in uh, early, mid-April. Uh, we had a pretty good, decent-sized pullback. Uh, the prices relaxed, and the gold and or silver uh, were overbought. And then just in the last uh, a week and a half or so, you started to see some strength. And I picked up on the, uh, the the article that I posted. I posted three charts, gold, silver, and the miners. I used the HI, uh, HUI index. And what you'll see is that uh, the HUI has gotten to the point of, of uh, close to breakout. It's breaking out at this point. Over 275 is a breakout. Obviously, over silver is a breakout. And those aren't new highs until we get to $50. But there's not, there's really nothing on the chart uh, between thirty and fifty dollars. So once we get over thirty, I think thirty is going to become the floor, and you probably, I'm guessing, within three to six months' time, you'll see fifty dollars in silver. And of course, gold is is still is again pushing up against twenty four hundred. Over twenty four twenty five is a is a new high. Um, if you look at the charts that I posted, you can see on the bo very bottom of the chart. Uh, you see the MACD, that's the moving average convergence divergence. And if you look at the very uh, current time, you'll see on all three charts, you'll see a hook that's forming and the HUI and silver have crossed over and gold is, is lagging just a little. Uh, the hook is not fully completed, uh, but we've got a crossover in silver in the HUI and that is that's going to create uh, momentum buying in in silver, gold, and DHUI. And that'll push these things into new highs. Uh, and I, I don't, yes, we're going to see huge volatility, but the paper markets no longer rule the price as they have in the past. Yeah, uh, I mean, an ounce of gold or an ounce of silver that was mined 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, is still only an ounce of gold. Nothing changed. It, it doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. It just is. What changes is the value of the currencies. And watching uh, gold, silver, and even you know the cost of a cup of coffee going higher is a function of the fiat currencies losing purchasing power. What do you think of today's episode? Is silver going to reach 50 by the end of June? Post in the comment section your price prediction for gold and silver and watch this video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I see you on the other side.